Welcome to InstaFesta Online. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to look at FatFilter Saturn 2, FatFilter Volcano 3, and FatFilter Timeless 3. We're going to learn how to process some sounds with these plugins, some bass lines, some plucks. We're going to learn how to use the modulation systems on them because they're all quite similar. So once we learn how to use the modulation system on one of these plugins, uh, we can carry it over on the rest of the plugins. So let's go ahead and listen to this hard techno demo track that I have. And then we're going to get right into it and look at the plugins themselves. <laughs> So there we go. We got a really nice distorted sounds in there. Some flex, some uh, bass lines, as I said. As I said. Um, but basically, it's a hard techno acid track. It sounds lovely. There's loads and loads of resonances. And that's all achievable thanks to Saturn, Volcano, and Timeless 3. So I'm going to break down some of these sounds for you. Uh, let's start off with this uh, little pluck. We're gonna start off the break and we're gonna loop a couple bars right there and we're gonna add the plugins one by one to see exactly what our original sound sounds like. The original sounds from Fat Filter Twin. 
As you can hear, it's a very simple pluck. Now with a bit of a Saturn II, let's turn the drive down. We start to get this guitarish tone that sounds really lovely. And with this guitar tone, we're able to basically cut through the mix because without this, it's gonna sound really bland. And in the drop, we're not gonna get it to, like I said earlier, cut it through the mix. We add that Saturn 2, we're able to cut through the mix, we added some tone, some definition to the sound. Lovely. And now, what I want to show you is some of the built-in um, modules here, or, or distortion types. Take a listen to them. So we can appreciate here how with the tape the and the tube modules, we're able to, uh, or distortions, uh, we're able to have the ability to have a subtle, clean, warm, broken, and basically the same over here with the tape. So basically we got mild, medium, and spicy, you know? And then we have amp over here, and here we have loads of different types of amps. So we want to go for a more rock type of tone, we can use some of these amps right here. And let's check it out in the mix. Over here. Let's turn on some of the other instruments and sounds. Oh, sorry. Let's turn on the whole track. So it sounds lovely. Now, instead of using EQ, what I tend to like to do is go for the Saturn II first, uh, apply some of this distortion, whether I like, or saturation. There's also subtle saturation and gentle heavy. Um, and basically, I like to run it through some of these distortion modules and see what's the best suited for the sound. And then is when they decided to maybe add a little bit of EQ to burn up the high end. Should we turn back to the tube, broken tube? I think I had to drive around 85-ish percent, somewhere around there. So then I say, hey, the, the tube was a little, a little dark. How about I had a little bit of EQ in the high end, on the sides. Just something extremely subtle and it works wonderfully. Now, if I turn out all the other sounds or all the other processes here, you can appreciate that I have a volcano. That then filters my sound again, right? And now it's using um, basically an XLFO to turn on a little gate, basically. See this? One uh, eighth note and is quickly modulating the, the high uh, 
band over here. And that way I'm able to tame some of that low end that's leaking in because of the, the broken uh, tube. And I'm also able to create some more space and ambiance or giving them, you know, the reverb and the delay some space. So pretty cool sounds right there. Now I'm going to show you guys Volcano 3, which is an absolutely monster of a plugin. It's, it's amazing. It's one of my go-tos. I'm able to uh, basically record my synthesizers, um, my analog or my virtual analog synthesizers, hardware synths, and then I'm able to apply filters and other processes to them uh, in posts. So let's take a listen to this uh, lead sound or uh, bass sound that I have. And we get this really hard, like, harmonically rich sound. There's a lot of uh, upper harmonics in there, a lot of distortion. Um, I chopped up the sound at the beginning of the track, pitched it up an octave. Now, it doesn't sound natural because I'm using, you know, I'm basically pitching it up uh, an entire octave. But with Volcano, I'm able to add some uh, MIDI notes and I'm able to um, play around with the filter a little bit. And let me just turn off this timeless thing we're at right now. And then I'm able to apply a filter to this. And in this case, I'm using a low pass filter over here. And I'm using a, a little boost over here. <laughs> And what I've done is two things. I've applied automation to the filter. So I'm, I play around with the filter. And I also have uh, MIDI notes, which I copied from the original MIDI that I use on the synthesizer. And I pasted it over here to track that's sending out MIDI information to Volcano 3. Now my Volcano 3 is accepting this MIDI right here. And I'm using it to modulate a couple things, like the filter fre one frequency. And I could also use it to modulate other things. Okay. In the context of the, the baseline, it's, it makes it sound really dark at some points of the track and a lot brighter. So those MIDI notes help the filter move up and down. Now with the heavier bass notes, what I'm doing is also applying a Saturn II. So I can boost some of the low mids and the mids as well here. And I leave the presence and the bass uh, pretty much intact and I'm just using a bit of the warm tube on the Saturn 2 but it makes quite a bit of a difference let's listen over here it just drives it like in nicely it makes you like get that bass face you know now if I go over to the bass part here We have a really, really low cut sound. If I come over here. Now we get some of the acid, acid uh, sounds because we get some LFO modulation on this sound right here. And routing LFO or modulation is quite simple. I just have to select the parameter. Let's say I wanted to control the drive. I could do so like that. Mm. 
Okay. So I'm able to do stuff like that quite easily. Let's get rid of that. Let's add a new MIDI source. Let's add the um, keyboard tracking. We can use this to map to the frequency. And let's do a bit of it. Or we can do 100%. So we can have the ability to do keyboard tracking. We can also control if it's linear, exponential, logarithmic, square, um, sine. So there's lots of abilities there. Now there's different types of uh, filters here. We have classic, smooth, raw, hard, hollow, extreme, gentle, tube, metal, easygoing, and clean. And we have different slopes over here. We have 6 dB, it's gonna sound a bit smoother. Let's listen to it in the context of a track. Twelve dB. And there you heard of the twenty four and forty eight dB soap. Like I said, we have different uh, filters here. Let's uh, listen to in solo, so it's quite obvious. So uh, solo the track here. So you heard all the filters, as you heard, some of them are a little bit more acidy, like the extreme one and the raw. Some of them are a lot more smooth, like the classic, gentle, smooth, and the, yeah, the, the smooth one too. So yeah, you can get quite different sounds out of these filters. There's a filter delay, so we can have up to four different filters turn on at one time and get a whole different result. Let's turn off timeless for a second. And I'm going to basically replicate the same type of processing as on filter three. And what I'll do is basically I'm going to use a delay to create two different types of uh, signal. And get a whole different result. All right, that was a look at Volcano 3. Now let's take an in depth look at Path Filter Timeless 3, which is a fantastic delay. So here I have Timeless 3. I use it to create some really cool riser effects. Check this out. That's pretty cool. There, there's a lot of modulation going on. If I wanted to recreate the sound with um, a couple plugins, I would need, you know, at least four, five, six plugins uh, to recreate something similar to this. The original sound is a simple uh, saw wave. Yeah. So we're able to 
completely turn it into something different, new um, with Timeless 3. Now I've duplicated Timeless 3 already, and I've already recreated the automation lanes here, uh, except for the pitch shift. Let's copy and paste that automation. We'll see. Control V. There we go. This way we don't have to waste too much time creating the automations. Um, depending on your DW, it will be a little bit different. Now, the parameters that I'm automating are the pitch shift right here. Uh, if we just listen to it now. We get the pitch shifting. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a... Uh, oh, Fix right here the this set it to quarter note. Press right click control. Uh, sorry, left click and control to reset that to 100%. Because I've uh, set this a little bit ahead of time. Actually, let's change this to eighth note. And now we're you're going to be completely on time. See that? We arrive at bar nine on time because I added a little bit of a gap there, a eighth note gap on my MIDI. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an X LFO. We have different modulators and I'll show you some of them as we go along right here. Now I'm going to automate the pitch here. You can see the modulation there and the automation's linked to this guy already. So let's take a listen. See that? Pretty cool. Uh, now what I'll do is I'm going to add some cross mixing, some diffusion. Let's turn it on so we can get some nice reverb. All right, there we go. We got some nice reverb. And the next thing I'll do is I'm going to add another XLFO. In this case, we're going to set this to be 16 bars. We're going to have it modulate the filter over here. And we're going to set it to be negatively modulating. And there, thanks to um, Timeless 3 being very visual, we can see all the movement right there. And then I'm going to turn on the lo-fi effect here. And I'm going to modulate this as well. Okay. And now when we play back our sound. We get this cool um, movement, reverb, and a little bit of a lo-fi effect, though it can make it a bit more drastic, in my opinion. Let's make it more drastic. And one other thing I'll do is I'm going to add this parameter right here. And what this parameter does is it sends one channel to be pitched up and the other channel to be pitched down. So whenever I modulate the pitch here, one channel is going to move the opposite way. Okay, let's check this out. All right, there we go. So we get some uh, really cool sounds. So now if we put it in the context of the track. All right, we're getting pretty good sound. Now there's a few things that I want to still do to this and that's add drive to it. I could also make the dynamics be a little bit more compressed and I want to add an envelope follower 
which is a little different from our envelope generator that we saw earlier. With the envelope generator, you can kind of create some pluck sounds. Um, you can make the ADSR envelope very apparent. With this envelope, however, you're able to use audio as a normal input or a sidechain input. In this case, I'm just going to use the normal input. And I can use it um, via envelope or transient so that whenever a click or something hits, I can use that as a trigger. In this case, I'm just going to use envelope and make it be a little bit slow and I'm going to have it modulate my output. There we go. And now the cool thing is we can have it modulate multiple times over. We can get some really quiet sound out of it and then it gets really loud. Okay, I'll set it to taste and let's listen back now. Okay, there we go. I think we got it now. It's a little bit louder, you know, but it's fine because we're getting that effect. I can just lower my mix a little bit. Uh, I think I have automation there already, though. But no worries. It's all good. So there we have it. We have a pretty cool sound. And we learn how to use Timeless 3. We learn how to use the modulations here. Uh, one quick thing we can also do here. Um, I can use pitch shift or I can use an XLFO to control and modulate the amount of modulation from another uh, modulation source. So I can control that with this. Take a listen. <laughs> That's really nice. I think for the original sound, I think I had it to do pitch a thing up to 5.2, somewhere on there. There we go. And I think now this is gonna seal the deal and we're gonna have pretty much exactly the same sound. Oh, oh, oh. And the other thing that I need here is to set this to linear. So <laughs> I really love this. We can create uh, more steps or randomized steps um, with, uh, with the X level here. See that? It's lovely. Oh, let's just go back though. So you can get something that's really, really unique to us. So there we go. We grab a saw tone out of a fat filter twin, and then we use Timeless 3 to mangle it up, turn it into a riser, make it do these glitchy type of sound effects, filter it out, um, and it's really lovely. So Timeless 3 is not just good for um, your typical delays that we have like earlier with the baseline where we have delays going on there, but we also can use it as a FX processor in a very creative way. All right, that's going to be it for this video. If you learned something new today, make sure you give the video a like. If you really enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with InstaFesta. And make sure you ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Once again, I'm Kevin Ochoa, and I hope to see you at the next InstaFesta. Peace.